Welcome to Kosminski Experts. Joining us today is Professor Aleksandra Przegalinska, I would say pioneer uh, in artificial intelligence both in Poland and internationally. And today we're going to talk a little bit about how people view artificial intelligence basing it only on pop culture and what of it it is actually possible or not possible and how much time it will still take to get there. Mm -hmm. So uh, tell us, Aleksandra, uh, what do you think? What is the vision for artificial intelligence c in the current society? What do they think mm -hmm. about it mm -hmm. when they don't know the topic specifically? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the problem with AI is that uh, maybe that will be a, a bit contra controversial, what I'll say, but uh, I think the main problem is that many people feel like experts in artificial intelligence without really navigating in the field quite well, right? So AI, like a, a few other things, became that a popular topic of discussions, right? And mm -hmm. that's a good thing because it's good that people want to investigate it and want to learn more. But if the only source of knowledge about it is popular culture and movies, uh, Hollywood productions, mm -hmm. Netflix productions, then you might get a very gloomy picture of what AI holds. And also you might think that it's way more advanced than it really is. Mm -hmm. And so these are like the two things that I think people who work in artificial intelligence are seeing and are facing, that the general idea is that singularity is coming. We have less than 20 years or perhaps mm -hmm. 10 years and we are done because the super intelligent machine is going to take over the world and get rid of us or something like that. And um, I, I, that's one thing. And the other is that, uh, you know, it's always about a war or some mm -hmm. sort of conflict. So when you think about it, I think humans are very good at projecting their own conflicts on other beings. Like, look at movies about humans versus aliens. Mm -hmm. Always yes. a conflict, right? Look at uh, those movies that describe our relationships with technology, with AI. Mostly very negative, dystopian picture. Mm -hmm machine is taking over like in Matrix, like in I Terminator, robot. iRobot, you have some positive images mm -hmm. like WALL-E, right, mm -hmm. where that machine is actually nicely displayed and also you have Interstellar, where I think the depiction mm -hmm. of AI is beautiful, but this is the minority. And in the majority cases, you're like, all right, I mean, AI is taking over, let's prepare for the battle, which is absolutely or doesn't have to be true, right, mm -hmm. because it's a, a tool in our hands and I think we have that way of thinking because we are antagonized and we are in such a conflict, like globally there are so many conflicts between classes, between groups mm -hmm. in society, between different societies, nations, and so on and so forth, that we are very driven to think negatively about the future and AI is in it, so it always falls into that category mm -hmm. of a bad guy. Okay, so I'm going to give you some specific examples mm -hmm. of uh, artificial intelligence in uh, popular uh, movies, TV series, or even video games. Uh, and can you tell uh, me, firstly, is it mm. possible in the near future, okay. or is it not possible? All and right. if it is possible, then how long still for it to be All created? Right. I'll give it my best shot. Okay, the first one you already mentioned, so the Terminator, and uh, artificial intelligence that is going to turn on humanity. Is that mm. even possible? And if yes, then mm -hmm. what should humanity do to prevent that? Well, I don't think that artificial intelligence that evolved as it is presented in Terminator will appear in any human form. Mm -hmm. So frankly speaking to me, that movie is funny because it's AI is always this one super robot, right? Actually, artificial intelligence is a networked system with very dispersed agents, right? So when you think about AI, it's usually a cluster of different capacities that are usually virtual. Of course, you have some robotic, uh, you know, um, creatures like Boston Dynamics designs mm -hmm. those robots that can move very quickly and smoothly uh, and they are very good at what they're doing, avoid obstacles and so on and so forth. But these are still very inadvanced systems. Actually building a physical system that could work smoothly and operate in the changing world is one of the hardest tasks, right? So. I think that if there will be a sophisticated artificial intelligence, that in the first place it will not come to us as a physical robot looking like a human. Actually, mm -hmm. that's the last thing I would, uh, you know, envisage. So uh, to me, that movie is obviously very funny that way. But it's a, you know, it's a reversed Superman. Mm -hmm. It's actually that evil guy, evil villain who is evil because he doesn't have emotions, right? So it's like a, a, a nice 
a kind of picture mm -hmm. uh, to, or image to play with in your head, but uh, in reality, it has very little to do with artificial intelligence today. Okay, well, now uh, we're going to address a little bit more, I mean, a little bit more positive view. Okay, which one? Mm -hmm. uh, actually, you know the series Star Trek. Of course. Right, of course. I'm also a huge geek about mm -hmm. it. Uh, but basically, in the series, there are multiple, let's say, references or examples from artificial intelligence. Uh, firstly, for example, the whole ship is run by an artificial yeah. intelligence. All of the ships in the series are. But they also have one specific technology there. And that is uh, virtual mm -hmm. um, intelligence hologram. Like it's an yeah. emergency holographic doctor. Yeah, yeah. Right? But as the course of the series, uh, develops, the virtual intelligence becomes an artificial intelligence mm -hmm. because they uh, allowed the doctor to change his own programming. Yeah, yeah. And the question is, mm -hmm. how close are we to, for example, such a doctor, like an artificial intelligence person that can really help us? It can be, of course, in medicine, a doctor, mm -hmm. or actually as in a profession, uh, that, for example, mm -hmm. I'm calling someone, I need some help, and they can really interact with me. Yeah, well, that's that's actually quite serious in the sense that we're now even discussing uh, a lot, you know, implementation of artificial intelligence in therapy, where it's not going to be a holographic doctor, but it may be a very advanced bot that's going to advise you. For instance, if you uh, suffer from some sort of conditions like... Uh, and what could it be? Well, uh, diabetes is mm -hmm. a good example, right? So if you suffer from diabetes, actually right now, uh, there are many ideas and pilot projects uh, of systems that are supposed to manage your diabetes by advising you what you could eat, what you've eaten so far, and how does that add up uh, you know, to the amount of calories that you've consumed, where you have to be careful which foods to avoid, and kind of guides you through. And also, you know, collects certain uh, data mm -hmm. about your organism, what happens in it, and then sends it to a doctor or even analyzes parts of those, uh, you know, data by itself. So definitely e-medicine or telemedicine, as we call it, mm -hmm. is something that is currently developing, perhaps not in the form depicted in Star Trek, but definitely this is something where AI is going to be uh, enrolled and we will see these advancements uh, quite soon, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, a third one I think everyone is quite familiar with is Microsoft Cortana. Yeah. Right. But well, I don't think that many people know it, though, because it's very much a business project. Mm -hmm. I think many people know Siri, many people know perhaps Google Duplex or the Google Assistant. But with uh, Cortana, well, I'm obviously familiar with mm -hmm. it, but... Uh, whether people know so much about it, less. I will, I will tell you a yeah. little bit about the pop culture reference. Okay. Uh, because there is a series of video games called Halo, mm -hmm. right? also developed by Microsoft, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, and inside of those games, where you play the hero, of course, and you save the galaxy, mm -hmm. but you always have with you the artificial intelligence named Cortana. Mm -hmm. And even has the same voice as the real okay. time, real -time right. Cortana. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is actually my question. For example, in our phones, we currently are using virtual uh, assistants, for example, Siri. Mm -hmm. um, and when do you think we can count on real artificial intelligence in our phones mm -hmm. that we can interact with? Like, uh, very company? soon. I think very soon. Depends on, you know, what your requirements mm -hmm. are and how advanced you want it to be. But actually, a week ago, uh, Google has shown its new assistant called Mina. Mm -hmm. And this assistant actually even cracks jokes. These jokes are quite bad, but they're very contextual in the sense that they make sense in the conversation that you're having. And they're embedded in the topics of the conversation. And the system manages the conversation really well. Remember what you said before. That mm -hmm. adds up kind of to what it understands in the conversation, how it navigates it. So, uh, you know, you have Cortana, you have, you have Siri, you have Google Assistant, you have GPT-2. You have um, so many other examples of systems or debater mm -hmm. that are either uh, storytellers or that are just about conversing with you and they are really advancing quite rapidly. So I think in terms of natural language processing and entities that can do it well, even understand human language and be responsive to it, um, this is uh, near future. Okay. So I hope that we busted some myths 
right I here. Surely hope so. Right, mm. right here for our viewers. And thank you very much for joining us, uh, the Kosminski Experts Program. And we highly encourage you uh, to watch our next episodes. And if you want to learn such interesting things as we talked about today.